Welcome to This Degenerate Life. I'm Jake McCown. And I'm Dylan Collins. Thanks for tuning in. So it's been our second podcast and we're in day like 40 of this lockdown quarantine. No comedy, no going out to bars, no no nothing. And it's been complete bullshit. It gets worse depending on which news network you decide to tune into. I'm seriously tired of uh, celebrities on the internet and TV telling me to stay home. I think that's my biggest pet peeve, seriously, is like, stop telling me what to fucking do while you sit in your mansion and get on your TV and Twitter. You know, as somebody uh, retweeted that in, in Santa Cruz, seven people got arrested. I don't know if they got like arrested, but they got fined for being out during the stay-at-home order. And the Santa Cruz PD was like bragging, like $7,000 in fines right here. Should have stayed at home. It's like, f- go fuck yourselves. I mean, that's the police for you, right? Exactly. Like, I would expect nothing less. And regardless what you think of the pandemic or whether you should stay at home or not, the police shouldn't be bragging about racking up some bullshit fines. <laughs> I mean, I bet they do that a lot about, like, you know, parking tickets to, to speeding tickets. I bet they're just, that's what they brag about. And When the government gives out money, you know, they want it back. It's true. Yeah, I like how they, like, it's just like a front, right, on our taxes next year. It's the same thing that fucking with PG&E when they burned down paradise, you know. It's true. So, during this uh, quarantine, how you been staying busy? Porn. Have you been watching a lot of porn? A lot of porn, man. More than normal or just... No, way less than normal, actually. Um, I haven't really been drinking that much either. This quarantine has probably been the best thing to ever happen in my life. Aside from stand-up, you know, ending. Maybe that was the best thing that ever happened in my life either. I'm saving a lot of money. Yeah, you're saving a lot of Uber Uber rides, right? A lot of Uber rides. I was supposed to have that co- this competition down in Fowler, which is like in Fresno, and I have no car, so I was going to like take the bus down there. This was a competition to put you on the map too, right? Oh, absolutely, you know. All the industry was going to be there. You could have possibly gotten booked a couple like Indian casinos in the middle of nowhere. That that's really all I could ever hope for. Agreed. Yeah, personally, for this quarantine lockdown, dude, I've been, I've been eating like shit. Like sleeping into it, it's like, it's fucking shitty. It's like a living hell for me. I've been going, so I've been going on a lot of walks with my dog. And I run into uh, this fucking eight-year-old or like 10-year-old in my neighborhood. Every time I walk by this guy, this kid, he's like yelling out shit to me. <laughs> like like he wants to like, I don't know what to do with this situation. This 10-year-old is like talking shit to me when I walk by with my dog. First time he like, he insulted my uh, shoes, which are Crocs, which... First off, go fuck yourself. You can go to hell. Crocs are awesome. You know what, dude? I like Crocs. Yeah, I'm taking a stand, and I'm on Team Crocs. I actually just bought a pair of Crocs, believe it or not. They're great shoes. Yeah, I'm going to work in them. But also, I'm 32. I have a fucking house, and I'm not trying to like chill out for anybody. The, situa- the whole situation is like a lose-lose. Like, What am I going to do? Am I going to fight this 10-year-old in the street? Or like, am I going to yell something back to him and then like have to fight his, his parents? You know his dad's not around, obviously, right? But... Like, mom's boyfriend's going to be there. It might be grandma and grandpa, you know? Dude, I've seen his mom. She's, like, she's got the alcoholic mouth, like, Thanos' is like mouth, you know? Yeah, are they going to come out and say shit to you? No, she's a, she's a straight-up alcoholic, his mom. Like, I, you can see in the face. Like, I, I, they're right down the road from me. Like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know where I live. Like, it's, it's a real lose-lose situation. Like, I don't gain anything from fighting this 10-year-old, you know, in the street. I mean, do you ever gain anything from fighting any 10-year-old? <laughs> I don't know. You know how people like go say like they go back in history like I wish I could have killed Hitler when he was like a baby. Like this could be it. This could be my moment. Like I kicked the future Hitler's ass. You could. I I wouldn't go back and kill Hitler though. I don't. Who would right? Who would kill a fucking baby? People would look at you real real fucked up. Like real fucked up. Like you just killed a baby. Yeah, but he's the future. He he caused the Holocaust in the future. People are gonna be like you're fucking crazy and you're going to jail for a long long time for killing a baby. Yeah, and they don't uh, capital punishment back then. Probably like Holocaust level shit. It's true. Yeah, so I like I've been like thinking of like roasts for this ten year old. Like I've been writing I've been writing material for this ten year old. So like every time I walk by <laughs> I, w- I wanna have like a roast ready, you know? The other day I was driving by and I like jumped at him like like you know, like I wanted to fight him through my car. It's uh lose lose and I'm really starting slowly to hate my neighborhood. You just gotta go over there and kick his ass. I mean, here's the other thing, I'm five eight, so <laughs> the cop the cop will be like it's kind of a fair fight. Yeah, they're like, you know what? We're going to let this one slide. What if he kicks my ass, though? <laughs> That's the lose-lose part, right? If I win the fight, I just kicked a 10-year-old's ass. That's fucked up. But if I lose the fight, that's 
terrible. If you lose the fight, it's even worse. Like the imagine what the Marines would think. Yeah, that's the other thing. I've done like a lot of shit in my life, right? I've I've been to war twice. I've seen people die. I've been on the ambassador's protection team in Iraq. I bought a house. I've done a lot of things. I've owned businesses. And now I'm going to go fight a 10-year-old? Like, now a 10-year-old's like a bully. Like, I'm not bullying, but he's, like, talking shit. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's funny that all the, like, things that you do in your life, places you live, like, you're from Florida, and now you're, like, living in Orville, California, and you have, like, a relationship with this 10-year-old kid. Like, you know each other. And you're like, I don't fucking like you. He's a bitch, man. He's a punk. He's a real punk. Like, is he, was, he was me. I was that kid when I was 10, too. Like, I was yelling. I was fucking with people. I was doing it worse, though. I was, like, throwing eggs at people and, like, fucking with their property. So I was like, I'm getting a little bit, maybe a taste of karma, but but it still sucks. Like, I'm going to have to kick this 10-year-old's ass or get my ass. I'm not going to get my ass kicked, but, like, how fucked up would that be if that did happen? I hope it does. My, my girlfriend would probably dump me, dude, on the spot. And I would, I would like, encourage it, too. I'd be like, yeah, you need a real man. I mean, I could beat up a 10-year-old. Does he take your girl after that? If he beats my ass, there's, like, an 80% chance that he's actually the father of my unborn kid. I mean, he would probably raise him better than you would. If I lost, right? I mean, either way. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, I seen his mom at the store, though. Like, I wanted to, like, hit on her. Like, do it in front of him, too. Yeah. Be, like, a solid, like, yeah, fuck you move. But, dude, she had her face, like I said. Like, her face, like, r- her mouth, like, wrinkles in. Like, she's Thanos. She's got, like, this real alcoholic mouth. I don't know if you, you can picture what I'm saying. Like, her mouth kind of looks like a butthole because of all that drinking. Like, alcoholics' faces just start caving in, you know, from, like, all that bottle they've been put into their mouth. But that's what she looks like, so I couldn't really bring myself to hit on her, as even as a fuck you. Yeah, she probably would have been down with that. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, she would have been like, yeah, let's go. I'll get rid of my kid right now. <laughs> I saw her at 7-Eleven. That's, like, the other thing. Like, they're, they go everywhere I go, like, around my house. So, it sucks, man. It sucks. I've also, during this lockdown, I installed a bidet. A bidet? Yeah. A bidet? Bidet. However you want to call it. Is it warm? No, dude. It's fucking cold. Is it, like, refreshing? I mean... Are you down with it? Like, at first, it was, like, gross. Like, this is fucking weird. But, like, slowly, it's like... Uh, sometimes I just go sit on there and I, I run the water on my ass even when I don't have to shit. I mean, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> is, is a bidet gay? Like, if you, if you enjoy that? No, not at all. Okay. You know, I was thinking, like, it's, what else is, like... If you do it... If you do things with a woman, but it's, like, gay... Is it gay? Like, if a woman... Puts a strap on and fucks you in the ass. Is that gay? It's not 100% straight. I think it's fucking gay as shit. It's definitely like modeled after a dick. But it's also a girl. Like, is a girl doing it to you? Well, is it gay or if it's a bigger dick? <laughs> or is that just like, more impressive? You, you cross the threshold of, threshold of gay as if you're backing up to it. If you like push into it. That's just experience. <laughs> I have friends that have had girls put a finger on their butt. Like, is that gay? I mean, it's kind of gross. I agree. It's gross because, like, are you prepared? Like, if if you're going if if you're going out for like a one night stand, the last thing you're planning on doing is like, I better make sure my butthole's in order. Yeah. Like, I might not have even wiped properly. That's the other thing, dude. I know what my butthole looks like, right? Kind of like it's hairy, like a war zone. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. I would feel bad for a girl having to put anything there. But you know, there's somebody out there that wants to put their mouth on that. Story time. When I was a, a young Marine in Hawaii, I went out like to the bars and I picked up an older woman and uh, she was like 35. I was, you know, 20, 21. And she, she licked my butthole. It was, it was weird. It was weird. It felt weird. Like not just like her, like doing it like that part kind of felt like it was okay. But like <laughs> she had my legs up. It was like, what is going on? I felt like I, I don't ever want to do this again. Like it's a woman, but it's like, it doesn't feel right that a woman's licking my butthole right now. Yeah, you let it She's happen. She's like licking my balls. And you probably and helped her along the way. Yeah, it's deeper. <laughs> no, I didn't say that, but it was like, it was, it was uh, an experience. And then, you know what? I told my friend, who, by the way, is the guy who like makes his girlfriend put a finger in his butt. He tries taking that same woman on a date the next week. <laughs> And she for licked, that reason and she licked his butthole right no she didn't wow dude that's sa- what does that say about you yeah you know a girl sees me at the bar and they're like oh i'd eat that scrum shout out to her have you ever had a girl do that to you i have have you yes it feels amazing was it like a girlfriend or was it like a one-time hookup no not a girlfriend one night stand name names uh i would if uh if names were to be named but Damn. one night stand is not a names name situation did you uh tell her you loved her afterwards i mean i might have it might have slipped out that's one of the most thoughtful things anybody can do is lick your because i didn't ask 
Neither did I. I don't go into any situation. I would never, dude. I would never be like, hey, how do you feel about licking my butthole? I probably wouldn't ask like that. Uh, I probably wouldn't yield good results. But for somebody to just do it unsolicited, that's the most thoughtful thing anybody could ever do. Yeah. They should make that into a fucking Hallmark card. What, what did you fuck her afterwards or uh, yeah sounds like you don't remember much or you're like you don't want to talk about it it's not like i don't want to talk about it i'm just have no further comment <laughs> did you did you not look her in the eye afterwards <laughs> I'll, I'll kiss you right on the mouth afterwards uh, okay yeah it's not like i wouldn't go there i just can't reach when my my friend like a big muscle head too he's like a like a gym guy and he told like he told me and a couple other friends like he's like yeah my girlfriend yeah, she put her fingers on my butt. I was like, oh, okay. She's like, he's like, yeah, she started off with one. Now I make her use two. He makes her? He, like, put him in there, bitch. Do you, I was like, we were asking him, like, do you moan? Like, when you back, do you back it up for her? <laughs> like, you can't moan, right? That's gay. I don't know if any of it's gay, but it's a slippery slope yeah. into kinkier and weirder shit. Sure. I mean, they all say, like, what, your prostate's in there? That's the way it is. Yeah, and plus it's, like, a sensitive area, dude. I like having my feet rubbed, too. It's not like I have a fucking foot e- fetish. clitoris on my fucking foot or like, or, or a foot fetish, either. Yeah. But it's just one of those things that feels good. It feels good to have somebody scratch your back. It feels good to have somebody fucking put their tongue on your butthole. You know, girls, I've, I've had a girlfriend that, uh, like she said, like, I used to masturbate by putting my pussy up to the shower head. And letting it like spray in there. Yeah, I bet you that's a pretty uh, common thing. I think. Day, yeah, day one thing. Yeah. So like that made me that I had that thought when I was using the bidet. I was like, Oh, see, so you've already transitioned. <laughs> yeah, it's like girls use use a fucking shower head to to get off. So like this spraying into my butthole, it's like maybe that's the maybe what if that gets me off? What if I just like orgasm by like like having a jet spray in my ass? So I've looked at these on Amazon, and they're really not that much to get like the cheap one that you just get just screw attaches you know to your uh, the water line and you screw underneath the toilet seat. Yeah. And one of it, they have this enema mode. Who's do, who's Keep using talking. who's using enema mode where they're just gonna have like a a sharp uh, stream of water straight up their bunghole. I mean, I know who's gonna use it. Like anybody that has a you know, a little bit of decency that knows they had like fingers in their butt. Yeah, if you're about to get your scrum eating. Yeah. Eaten. If you have that available to you and you don't use it, you're. I hear. Yeah, you're right. Like if you know some girl's about to put her mouth on your butthole. It's like going to the dentist. Like if you know somebody's gonna poke around your fucking mouth, they're gonna like brush your teeth right before you leave, right? Yeah, that's not out of like me being. I want to be nice to the dentist. That's like me being like embarrassed. Yeah. Do you go to the barber without fucking uh, washing, you know, taking a shower and washing your hair? Yeah, I've done that all the time. I'm a degenerate. <laughs> God, you're fucking awful. <laughs> you, have you ever made them wash your hair for you? All the time, dude. I love that. I love when they're, they wash my hair and then they whisper in your ear. Yeah. Yeah. So have you been dating while the score team is going on? Nope, not at all. So there's a lot of people that have been like distance dating. They'll meet on the app, right? And they'll like FaceTime. Like they'll have a FaceTime date. Oh, yeah. How stupid is that? Less stupid than a online comedy show, probably, right? No, it's not. Comparable? Nah, not even. Because, like, you, you'll watch, like, YouTube clips. Even before this quarantine started, you'll watch YouTube clips of, like, comedians doing their act. You've never, like, I mean, I guess you watch porn, but it's, like, it's not the same thing as trying to date someone. It's fucking retarded to me, dude. It's so stupid. You are a pussy. He- hear me out. Listen, if you're listening to this podcast... You can fight me over this as long as you're not that 10-year-old on my on the corner of my street. You're a fucking pussy if you d- you FaceTime date for a first date because of the quarantine. Like, she's a lesbian. Like, just know that. If she's attracted to you, she's a lesbian because you're a fucking giant pussy. Just so you know. You don't, you don't, you don't look as passionate as I do about this. I was just trying to find my angle on it. Yeah. I just think, like, you are. You're, you're a giant pussy, like... That wants to stay inside. That doesn't really actually want pussy. Like, you, this is like a safe route for you. Like, if you're actually taking this quarantine seriously and you're like, you're not like sick. I can understand for like senior dating. Like, if there's like a senior dating app, but even then, it's like you're gonna die. So like, why not just try to get it in in your last days? I need to take a piss. And we're back. Dylan just took a piss. I did, and I didn't wash my hands. I never do. I never do either. Honestly, man, I'm not going to start because of some made up virus by the media and the Illuminati. Yeah, it's for sure the Illuminati. I don't know what they want. I don't know what they're here for. I don't know why now. Yeah, we were just talking about uh, social distance dating. 
via FaceTime. And uh, I think I was saying I was, I was willing to fight anybody that does that, any dude that does that. And you said you, you've never, you haven't social distance dated. When was the last time you got laid, Dylan? Six weeks. Did you meet this girl on Tinder? Yeah. It was in between, what was that one girl? The hookah lounge? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That one chick, she, uh... So it was after her. Yeah. Well, uh, we never, nothing ever happened. She, I got friend zone big time by, uh... Not really friend zone, but just, like, completely cock blocked. Oh, by her friend. By her friend. Yeah. I mean, probably for the best. It's just friends that only happen often? Sometimes. I wouldn't say, like, like often. Like, it, it happens when you're in, like, like high school, you know? Yeah. Like, friends only doesn't really happen as an adult. It'll happen, like, in the workplace. What about that, that comic that called you up in the middle of the night, told you to come over? Tell that story. I mean, it's just, like, a weird situation when somebody just hits you up at, like, 3 in the morning and was like, what's up? I mean, it's not, maybe it's not that weird. Maybe I would do it too, but yeah, and then you get friend zoned. <laughs> no, it's a great story, dude. You're not giving it. Well, it's, it's not uh, like, it's, it's not like uh, I got friend zoned then. It's like was friend zoned and then w- was reminded. <laughs> and then you're like how friend zoned I really was. Yeah. So she hits you up in the middle of the night and was like, come over, right? Like on Snapchat or something. She's like, come over. And then you're like, okay. And then you called her up and you're like, all right, I'm about on my way. And she's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And that's pretty much what happened. I mean, that's <laughs> what, why, why are you, why do you want to come over? Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you want to come over for? Disgusting. You're like my brother. I would never, never say never. But like, why are you up at fucking three in the morning asking? Yeah. Why are you, why are you Snapchatting somebody at 3 a.m. if you're not trying to get some dick? And you know what? I miss comedy, dude, obviously, right? It's been 45, 40 days. Like, we're at one of the last mics that was still going on. And people wanted that mic canceled. Like, people were trying, like, comedians, stupidly, were like, you got to cancel the mic. Even before the government's like, you got to cancel the mic. Like, how retarded are you? Like, if you don't want the mic to happen, don't go. Yeah, I went to the bitter end. I went to prob like the studio went open mic was probably the last comedy open mic or maybe not the sh- last comedy show, but it was one of the last shows for sure in California or anywhere. Yeah, no, it was like at least on like the coast, like New York and California. And, dude, there was nobody in the studio in that day. It was fucking empty. Yeah, there's me, you, L, Trailer Park, Steve. And uh, Eliza, and obviously the drunk regulars at the studio. Yeah, they, they probably are, you know, missing the studio. Yeah, I mean, they just got to look. They just go to the liquor store now, I'm sure. Yeah, but like, like even when we we're posting shows like a week before that, like about open mics, people were like deleting the posts and like the comedy group pages. Yeah, I definitely got a little bit of hate for posting about. You know, people try to be social justice warriors. People try to be like, you know, the bigger person and all the shit. And I don't know uh, if it always comes from a genuine place. It kind of, I'm not saying that it doesn't sometimes, but I don't think it, it always does. No, they're online tattletelling. I think sometimes people are just trying to be, you know, gatekeepers. And, and it's kind of, it, it, I think that's a, the same reason a lot of businesses like were on a shut down right away. It was just because of the backlash if you don't. Yeah, yeah right. Like, look what happened to uh, to some of the places that didn't shut down and still don't. They, uh, they'll, they'll get, like, blasted on social media. Did you see what happened to the crazy horse? No, I didn't. Well, first of all, the Crazy Horse is a terrible bar. Is that where I rode the bull? It is, yeah. Okay. That bar fucking sucks. It's fine. I it's just not my bar. Like I I'm not going I'm not gonna fucking go there and have a good time. Okay. But uh they posted on Facebook. They were like, We ain't shutting down due to no China virus and you know, of course all our uh holier than thou friends had to put them on blast. I'm so glad they did that. It makes me feel better inside. Is it any different than uh when that old guy from Duck Dynasty was like, I fucking hate them gays. It was like, of course, like, they're going to fucking say, so- like, and, and and the president says that shit on the video all the time. He's like, this China virus. So I don't think it's really fair to, you know, criticize them. I don't either. Uh, people get a little too upset when uh, when people have the opposite opinion instead of just fucking off. Like, has anybody ever tried just thinking about, like, if you just, if somebody, if you see something that you don't agree with, what if you just minded your own fucking business? I feel like a lot of people are going to hate our podcast, and I hope you do, but, and also, like, I hope you try to get it canceled. That will be great press. 
So that everyone that thinks China virus is racist, you're a fucking dumbass bitch. I call it the China Chinese virus all the time, all right? So come and get me canceled. Come post about it. Skits a little free pub. You on, you on board? You on board for that, Dylan Collins? I don't know, man. I, I probably wouldn't call it the China virus. I don't well, want to get canceled. Because it like comes that. from China. Yeah, it, I mean, it does come from China. Anyways. Probably started in a Chinese lab. The Illuminati runs deep in China. We just don't know any of these Chinese famous people. And that dude from Korea that, that did the dance, Gangnam Style, he's he's in deep with the... That guy's in on it, for sure. Yeah. That guy is... I wonder if he got coronavirus. Probably helped create it. Is he responsible? So how's work going since you're an essential worker? Work is going outstanding at Starbucks. Certified barista. Make your drinks and shit. There was this one lady that came in with her daughter and... She was ordering some fucking weird shit. She's like, can I get a decaf uh, frappuccino? And it, it just, it just, it, all this bullshit that makes it more complicated than it needs to be. And I like fucked her order up. I gave her like, I think I gave her a, bana- a blueberry muffin instead of a blueberry scone is what she was really mad about. What if she like, I want a mocha and you gave her a banana? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad. And she was like, this shit's unforgivable. And she had her daughter who was like eight years old. And her daughter was like talking shit. Like her daughter was yeah, like, Yeah, what's up with these little kid bullies, dude? Her daughter was like, Mom, we should have just like gone to the better Starbucks. Mom, I told you a bunch of retards work here. Dude, literally is exactly what she was saying. Her daughter was saying, My grandma would have fucking hit me for sure. If I was like eight years old saying that shit, you know, like, imba- like try to proving that that parent didn't raise you right. Yeah. But instead, that uh, little girl's mom was like, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you, you're you right, little girl. Tell him fucking what's up. I talk shit about kids, but when I was like 13, my mom bought me a police-grade megaphone so I could yell out the car at fucking people walking by. <laughs> so I was this kid that's like a piece of shit on my road, and the girl that came in your Starbucks on steroids with a megaphone talking shit to people. I definitely got like a little taste of my own medicine when I'm like walking by, minding my own business. When I used to have visitations with my mom, and she'd be driving around. Visitations like she was in jail? No, uh, I, like I grew up with my grandparents, and you'd have visitations for like custody and all this bullshit, you know, like child protect, uh, at court and stuff. Right. Like every we- other weekend or something, I'd have to like go spend at her house. Did you make her feel like shit when you went over there? No, I was always Grandma, cool. I don't want to fucking be here. <laughs> I mean, probably like when I was a little kid, like, but I don't, I don't remember any of that shit. But I was probably an asshole. I don't know. Yeah, she's got a small house, Grandma. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So go ahead. What about it? So when when we'd be driving around in her car she'd like have whoever was sitting in like the front passenger seat be shifting for her and like my brother would be like in the back uh reaching around her chair like steering and she'd be like putting on her makeup like going down the freeway in san jose dude that's kind of awesome she's literally just like has her foot on the gas and she's sitting in the driver's seat that's the only the driving person she's in the doing. back seat is steering without their seatbelt on and then the person in the uh, uh front passenger stu- like shifting the gears that is so awesome <laughs> would, you, would you have to be like clutch and she like hit the clutch and you oh uh, yeah uh slow down break 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 but once you're on the freeway you don't really have to worry about you know shifting gears that much bro that's a great idea i can't i'm glad i'm gonna do that i know you're about to be a father soon so your girlfriend you know might want to adopt some of those no it's gonna be me like she's like a good mom i'm gonna be the shitty person i mean what are you gonna be doing though driving you know what do you mean you're gonna have them like steering yeah i'll be steering and i'll be like drinking I'll be drinking and like Snapchatting myself, drink a beer because I'm still like a millennial asshole. And I'll be like, little Owen, that's his name. Like, you, If you don't want us to die yet, yet, like you better steer. You better steer good. So tell me more about these visitations with your mom. It used to not be that big of a deal because I lived in Fremont. So I uh, just have to go out to San Jose where my mom lived. And then my mom moved to Chico. Cause I've always had ties to Chico even before I lived here, like moved here. My great grandparents lived here, and my mom lived here, or she moved here. So that I was like every other weekend I was coming up to Chico from the Bay Area. That's a long fucking drive. Was it like three hours? Yeah, two like hours, two and a half hours. Three hours. Yeah. I mean, it's not the it, like in perspective now driving for stand up or like driving down to like A's games and stuff. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but as a little kid, it was like the end of the fucking world. Do you uh, do you ever see like uh, qualities in your mom that you see in yourself now, and you're like, fuck. Mom, dude, my mom's hella funny. I wish I wish that was the qualities I saw from my mom. It's normally like, 
I think like negative thoughts like this person fucking hates me. But like that's like my mom. Like she was fucking like crazy and she didn't have any self esteem. So like when I see it in myself, I'm like, oh Yeah, you're just a genetically broken. Exactly. Like there's no therapist that can solve like a like get being born to like a straight up depressive pill popping woman, you know? Like that's just life. That's just what you're born into. It seems like if you were born into that kind of situation, they would just know to send you, like, they could access your records and just know to send you, like, fucking therapy. Well, I got sent to the Marine Corps, so that's almost the same thing. <laughs> it's where all the other fucked up kids went. Get that PTSD. Yeah, I mean, I already had it, you know, from my childhood. So, okay, so work, you've, you're fucking up orders, and you're getting uh, punked by t- eight-year-olds. I haven't fucked up that many orders. Have you? How, how many have you fucked up? i fucked up a few. And Starbucks, they always seem like they're, like, unnecessarily happy too like is that like part of like the ethos there like you got to be happy no matter what and like well, just yeah. take the shit with a smile you're supposed to like it's like a coffee place you know what's fucked up some people it's like the high point in their day to go into starbucks and order coffee and say what's up to their favorite barista and then like these people that have been going to this starbucks for like years and like have this relationship with all these baristas they come in and then they see me working and they're like fuck god damn i gotta build up that relationship like again motherfuckers always quitting it's just like there's nothing that i can do i'm just not the person that they want also like you work in a starbucks at a uh, supermarket yeah and it's hilarious that people will just come into starbucks like they'll call co- or they'll come into safeway to go to starbucks how fucking stupid could people be and it's funny when people have gloves on and they're worried about like the money they're like Oh, I think you're going to touch the money and then touch my cup. It's like you're in fucking Safeway, dude. Like like fucking somebody like Raw Dog with like that has like STDs, dude, and expecting not to get one. Like you come into here and there's coronavirus in the air. You're getting we're all getting coronavirus in Safeway if somebody gets it. Yeah, it's a shitty job in a lot of ways. Uh, it's it's a fucking risky place to be. It's kind of bananas that we're in there. And it's funny when they put like plexiglass in front of us. You're still taking their card. You're still taking their money. Yeah. Yeah. They're still taking the drinks you've prepared. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to your uh, Starbucks and just put my laptop on the counter and <laughs> order a, a mocha and just start playing on my computer and stuff. And since you guys don't have like couches like normal Starbucks. Yeah. We'll fucking call the police. <laughs> I think the police aren't on our side this time, dude. Yeah. The police, th- dude, if Starbucks calls the police, that's like if a security guard calls the police, you know? It used to be. It used uh, after those black people got escorted out of the, the Starbucks and they got sued their fucking asses off. Now anyone can go into like a normal Starbucks and just sit there and not order a goddamn thing. Like if I owned a business and someone came in there and just sat there and didn't order a thing, I'd be like, you guys got to go. Is that what the controversy was? So this is in Philly a couple of years ago. Two like, uh, I guess two black guys were sitting there. I think they were waiting on somebody. I think the manager's like, you got to order something. They were loitering. They're loitering, okay? There's another word for it. They're loitering. And uh, the manager's like, you got to buy something or you got to leave. So so the manager called the police and uh, the police made him leave. That was the end of it. But that manager got fucking fired. Got, like, it was national headlines everywhere because someone filmed like the cops being like, you guys got to go. So, but... <laughs> People want something racist to happen so they can blow their lid about something. But it's like, it's not racist. Like, if you go into Chili's and you're like, I'm just going to sit in the fucking booth and not order in there and be like, uh, no, you got to go. You got to buy something. I mean, you could probably pull it off at Chili's. You could probably order like a bunch of But you of know food. what I'm saying. You could probably, at the, if you're willing to go in there and just sit there for no reason, you could probably just order a bunch of food and then just bounce. Have you ever done that? Dine and Dash? I've Dine and Dash one time when I was in New Orleans. We were like, we were partying on Bourbon Street and then we're like, we walked off Bourbon Street and we went to it like, kind of a nice restaurant so we're like sweating like we're from the new orleans like humidity like disgusting and obviously reeking of alcohol and it's like a, like a nice like classical music was playing in the background and we're sitting at the bar like ah pour me another beer please we got like two beers and like and they're like can we get our check and the guy never came back so we're like all right like after 15 minutes we're like bye after like so it was like five four or five beers total so it wasn't that bad i think we had an appetizer too that was that was the worst i've ever done that have you Never. I always wanted to. Like, if I have bad service, I want a dine and dash. Yeah, like, go fuck yourself. I, I can't stand bad service. Like, people, like, think people that, like, are assholes to waiters or, or like, bad people, like, terrible people. And, I, and they are. If they're, like, unwittingly, like, an asshole to a server. Like, that's not good. Like, to be an asshole out of your way. But, like, if it's bad service, like, you're paying for that. So, fucking, <laughs> if you want a good tip, 
you should be a good waiter waitress i feel like most waiter wait like wait staff do a good job though keep pandering keep pandering over there. He gives some, <laughs> i mean it is like it's very few and far between that you get somebody that's a real piece of shit yeah no it happens though it I definitely mean, happens like i say it happens more in california than it does in florida there's just some places though that you just expect to get shitty service and you do usually like if you go to hula's they never fucking check on you at hula's i love hula's and i continue to go there but to, to think that i'm gonna ha- i'm gonna tip them I stood in fucking line and like got sauce all over my shoes and like I I like went through fucking the trenches to get this fucking food and I had to burn my hand to like walk back to the table and like I'm gonna tip this waitress they bring a couple of things and then they fucking never check on you again like let me let me be clear like I'm I'll over tip if you're a good waiter waitress I'll over tip more than you're supposed to you're very generous I really am but if they're like shitty then they're getting less Obviously, that's all I'm saying. You know what's annoying? Like, let's say I go to Celestino's and I get a slice of pizza, and it's like four fifty. And then they're like, "Can you sign this?" And there's a spot for a tip. Am I expected to leave a fucking tip there? Yeah, I agree. Like, if it's like just counter service, I've always wondered that too. Sometimes I leave it. Sometimes I don't. Depends on how big her tits are. And you gotta be careful leaving it blank because you never know what these fucking degenerates will do. Agreed. No, I always uh, write it. I don't just write in the tip for him. I will. I'll never know personally. I'm not checking my fucking bank statement and shit like that. You could probably leave yourself a fucking twenty dollar tip, and I would have no fucking idea. No, you're right. I always put a line through it. But yeah, I do like uh, I get text messages to my phone every time my card spends money. So so I do now. So I don't know. Like, are we gonna have this cameo in the beginning of our episode? Uh, maybe. Okay. So let me give a little backstory. If you heard Chris Hansen in the beginning of this episode, we were we were kicking around an idea to have like a celebrity be a uh, our intro. And I um, I wrote an intro for Chris Hansen to read. And this motherfucker did not read it correctly. He read it shittily. <laughs> he fucking sucks. That's why he's not on Dateline anymore. But I thought it'd be pretty epic. And he did it kind of half ass. Not what we asked him to do. But he's Chris Hansen. He's an epic voice. And hopefully I- I'm trying to convince Dylan to put it in the beginning of the episode. Because I think it's you know still worthy if we edit it a little bit. Chris Hansen here for Jacob McGowan and the Degenerate Life Comedy Podcast. I'll be the judge if that's funny or not. Anyway, why don't you put your pants back on? You should have known when you clicked on that link and sent me your browsing history that you could meet me in a dark kitchen someplace. It's appalling. Drinking, drugs, aberrant sex, disgusting. Degenerate. And you are now in the right place. I'll be watching and I'm listening. I mean, it would be worthy if he like edited it out like completely so he says my name in the beginning of the podcast and he says the podcast wrong that's that's the first he first says two sentences absolutely nothing right yeah he says your name wrong he doesn't even say the podcast name right and then he says like some weird ass shit <laughs> he does he, oh man you know he just did like a fat line of coke before he read that <laughs> that guy's a fucking douchebag for that what a piece of shit i forget who i saw had a big feud with uh chris hansen i think it was theo vaughn theo vaughn like had chris hansen on his podcast and chris hansen like wanted like a hotel room and shit and like all this crazy amenities kind of a diva yeah and they fucking provided it and chris hansen like fucking stole the towels and like all this other shit it like ran ran up the bill and like ordered room service and shit and so there's like an extra thousand dollar bill you know why he did that because he's a fucking piece of shit well he does like he did the best like segment on dateline where he like got rid of fucking real pieces of shit i mean it was it was all entrapment honestly i'm not gonna sit here i'm not gonna start advocating for the pedophiles but that's total entrapment what you're doing dude so why are you pro pedophilia i'm just anti like the police running sting operations I think I think that that uh, sting operation is fine with me. Yeah, no, I I I agree, especially when people are willing to drive like three fucking hours, <laughs> walk into like some house like naked. That person is willing to do whatever it takes to fuck a minor. So that person is for sure deserves to be on Chris Hansen's show. So we uh I I paid some money to get that guy to read an intro that he read wrong. So maybe you've heard it. Maybe maybe we'll save it for another episode. We'll see. But I think it's still a decent it's a decent intro if we add it a little bit. Basically the beginning part. Hopefully we cut that out we were, but i was wondering there's like a bunch of desperate b-list c-list d-list celebrities on cameo there really are and we're kicking around the idea of like like i don't know starting a gofundme or something for our podcast to write some fucked up message for a d-list celebrity to read how fucked up will they get for for 20 bucks like the cheapest ones on there like tw- they go 20 to 50 and then like they go way up from there but 
like I'd love to have you know a guy from uh, 90 Day Fiance tells a loved one that that they have cancer, you know, <laughs> or something something completely fucked up. How great would that be? Or the guy from Sugar Ray. I saw where he did one where he broke up with somebody, but like it'd be awesome. He's like, hey, it's Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray. Hey, uh, Jake wanted to tell me tell you that um, he's got HIV. And there's a possibility that he passed it to you. Also, my album is for download right now on Spotify. Do you think you get a discount if he gets to plug his shit? He's like, yo, it's $25 to get the fucking cameo, but I'll do it for 10 if you let me plug my album at the end of it. Here's the thing. I think we can like we can get them to say the most fucked up thing that they want to say. If we're like, yeah, you can also like uh, like you can plug some stuff at the end if you want. I think they'll do whatever the fuck you want to. Like how how desperate do you have to be? as a celebrity like how how hurting for money do you have to be to be on cameo pretty bad right yeah i mean i, I would think so or just boredom boredom how quickly did chris hansen respond to that shit real quick like right away like an hour and a half yeah that's fucking way too quick and but he did a really shitty job like i said i think he did a big line what, of coke he, no he's a huge piece of shit for what he provided okay so um i opened up the cameo app let me read some of the celebrities on here andy dick 100 bucks hunter uh, go fuck yourself who else? Sean Aston, who's like the like the midget hobbit from Lord of the Rings, three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, dude. Yo, Flavor Fla- Flav is like four hundred bucks. Well, Flavor Flav, we're finally talking like somebody that I would actually. It'd be like an iconic voice to get. Who would you want to see on a uh, on cameo? Best uh, cameo if you got um uh walk a flock of flame to do it, and he he would do it for like. That's for, the best. No, I'm talking about like budget, like people that I would get. You know what I mean? I don't know who who who's the best. Who's got the most iconic voice? If you got like Joe, right now, it's like Joe Exotic, right? Maybe. Right now it is. You know uh, Joe Buck, the uh, sports announcer. Somebody offered a uh, million dollars for him to do a voiceover for a porn. Did he do it? He said no. He's he's mo- he's filthy, filthy rich. Yeah, and a million dollars. You know what? Fucking Chris Hansen would have done it for like sixty-eight dollars. I mean, he read ours for fifty. So, did you watch Firefest documentary? Oh uh, yeah, I did. The guy that's like I was fully prepared to suck his dick for bottles of water. He's on there for eighty bucks. Obviously, he'll he'll do he anything do for, for some a, money. You know? Yeah, he should do it for a bottle of water. Yeah. Yeah, no. we're not even asking for our dick suck. Eighty dollars, dude. How many cases of water can you get? How much um, dick sucking content do you think he gets requested to to talk about? I don't know. If he's making money, dude, shout out to him. I think like making money on some like degenerate ass shit like that is awesome. Let's see what he says. Percentage of everything I do is going to go to help pay back everybody in the Bahamas, and I want to thank everybody in, in advance for helping me make that happen. Listen, everybody, I'm looking forward to catching up and have a great day. So it sounds like he's like doing this kind of like to pay back the people he ripped off in the Bahamas. Almost like he's like almost like this is court ordered that I do this and that I pay back this money. I mean, it's obviously for his brand. What what's his brand? I don't know his name. He doesn't want to. Everybody thinks he's a piece of shit. Uh, have you heard of the comedian Granny Potty? No, I haven't. Granny Potty Mouth. She's on there. This is her uh, her cameo ad. She's just bitching. Anyways, we could probably get her to say some real racist shit, too, for like th- for 40 bucks. Like, I feel like she'd say that shit for free and says it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it probably does. I love how she has a stage name, Granny Potty Mouth. You know, her whole stick is like saying cock and people are laughing. <laughs> Wait, so what is she? She's a comedian. Like a stand-up comedian? I mean, I guess. I've never heard of her. She has 118 reviews. You know how um, if you're a hot girl, you can pretty much get whatever you want? Yeah. Like anything that you want, you can just make it happen. The same magic applies to old people on the internet saying ridiculous ass shit. And also old people throwing pity parties. Like like someone takes a photo and like the caption's like, My papa just had his 99th birthday. Nobody showed up for his birthday party like no shit everyone know your everyone your papa knows is fucking dead that's why no one showed up for his birthday party he's like how many how many likes for my papa but yeah you're right like they do get like all kinds of attention and love and like that that old person that's getting all this attention and love could have been a piece of shit probably was a piece of shit probably wouldn't black people wouldn't let black people drink from the same drinking fountain as them 
Oh, absolutely. It's it, like all the people that died before the Me Too movement are so lucky that their reputation is like safe. And it's crazy that like if, when you die, something happens where you're kind of immortalized, even if you're like probably did some crazy shit. Like the fact that Michael Jackson, people still love him and like defend him. Like, that guy probably did some weird shit with kids. Yeah, I got the kids. They in the bed. Whatever he was doing is not normal. No. But people will defend him till the fucking end. Did you watch that documentary? Yeah, I did. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, and I've been meaning to, but what do you think of it? I mean, it, it's it, a, a one-sided affair. Like, it, it was obviously a fucking hit piece on, sure. on him. But uh, the, regardless of you know any documentary that was made he he spent way too much fucking intimate time with those kids and uh the parents should have been fucking prosecuted for endangering their kids not fucking rewarded with like money for like if, if since they were the ones that want like when the, once the police got involved they should have fucking arrested the parents and like and michael jackson same thing with r kelly right it's like yeah r kelly fucked all those girls he's a piece of shit but, but who also, let it happen exactly the parents like where are the parents they're pieces of shit too man like, those kids, like, had no chance. Okay. <laughs> I heard this, like, other comedians talking about this on the the bonfire, but what, like, what comedian when you were a kid could, like, probably, like, rape you because you, like, so, like, starstruck as a kid? What comedian? Or, like, not comedian, but, like, what person? Like, what celebrity? Could rape me? Yeah. Like, as, like if you're, like, an eight-year-old. If I'm eight years old, who could rape me? So, for me, like, I feel like Fred McGriff for the Atlanta Braves. Fred McGriff, you yeah. let him rape you. Yeah, like I mean, like like an eight year old. He's like, yeah, you know, come hang out on my plane. We'll go to a baseball game. Like, I'm in. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I honestly, I I would have lower standards than that. I would, for me, it'd be like any baseball player, probably even down to double A. It's like some like high school baseball coach. Yeah, just <laughs> the guy who like said he played on a team ten years ago, but probably didn't. Yeah, he's just completely lying. <laughs> As a kid, there's definitely some people that could, like, seduce me from, you know? Like, I'd be starstruck, and they could be like, oh. And yeah, like, you know, uh, Fred McGriff, every time. Uh, the crime dog, dude. <laughs> but, like, like those kids, like, for Michael Jackson, didn't have a dad. And, they're, like, this dude, like, throwing tons of money at him. So, of course, they're going to be like, yeah, I'll go hang out with Michael Jackson. Like, I'll. I'll, I'll. Well, it, it very much like what Joe Exotic did with those fucking. Meth. Meth was his tool. Yeah. Well, and it, tigers. It was, un, you know, immature people. And uh, toys and drugs. But little kids don't even need drugs. Like, life is like being on drugs when you're a little kid. If you just get, like, candy and shit. Like, I can't play video games. Video games aren't as fun as they used to be when I was a little kid. So you could not entice me with video games today. You could probably entice me with meth. Yeah? Probably. Have you tried meth? No. Uh, Yeah, I haven't either. I didn't even know what a tweaker was until I moved to California. They don't... Like, it's out there in, in the south, southeast, but it's like crack is their thing out there and like out here it's like i mean what's the fucking difference you know once people are doing hard drugs like that there's a definitely a big difference in their like faces also is meth that bad is it that bad if it's that bad then how come every time my mother-in-law comes over my house is sparkling clean i mean it can't you know, be that bad yeah as long as she doesn't live there she doesn't live there i did live with her for a time but you know obviously i got my own place now and every time she comes over dude she fucking scrubs the shit out of my house and it's awesome like I like I'm like pro math for her. Yeah, shout out to her. Shout out to my mother in law that like cleans the shit out of my my house for some food. Before I ever did stand up, I I took a speech and debate class and like some other classes at Butte College for uh, communication. And one of them was public speaking. And I did this speech on methamphetamine use. While you're on methamphetamines. Like I was not on any methamphetamines, but you did it on. Okay, I got you. But I did it. On, I, I did it on methamphetamine, and it was fucking one of the funniest things I've ever done. To be honest, it was like I had some good jokes and stuff. You have like a video clip of it? I do actually. Well, I'll just take a look at that. We will have to check it out. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. You know, shoot any questions you have for us at our Twitter, at our Facebook, at our Instagram, whatever. We don't have any of those. I mean, Dylan's in- incognito apparently, but but shoot them at me. And we'll answer them on the air. Like I, I don't. I'd love to answer some fan mail or question mail on the on the podcast or any advice or any ideas you want to throw out there. We're glad to yeah, take you up on it. Yeah, definitely comment and uh, on our SoundCloud or Facebook. All right, thank you guys.